giving a whole new meaning to preheating. This is first. Well, we're back we are on back. first the uh, Verge Morning Show. I'm Josh Topolsky. I'm Ross Miller. And uh, it's been a crazy couple of days. It it's really a, a it disturbing couple of days. Kind of wish it was over already. Not I, it, lie. Would, it would be Very great tired. if the CES just ended right now and we could mm -hmm. go home and go to sleep for several thousand hours. Uh, but uh, we we'll can't do there. that. We're here. We're yes. here to serve for you. Uh, for you. This is, of course, first our morning show where we, we recap the uh, events of the previous day. We talk about what's mm -hmm. to come uh, for today. And uh, this is the point where CES really begins to slow down right. a little bit. People are uh, walking slower because of injuries. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, this is the point where I think we start to have a lot of fun because we get to go find weird right. stories and weird things out on the floor. Uh, but we're not done with events yet. No, there's still stuff happening. We're still there's uh, there's the T-Mobile thing today. Yeah, I think, but that is kind of one of the last, the, high, the big... highly controversial T-Mobile. Yes, event. and we'll talk about that later. This this is though the show floor is open for one day. Most of the press conferences really are done. Yeah, it's now the time where we get to look at things. Last year when we were at this point, it's where we found the Pebbles, where we found the Oculus Rift, and like yeah. the real big stories that we really enjoy, the smaller companies that actually had an impact throughout the year. This is the time where we'll start finding them. Yeah, I think you know once once you get through that the kind of haze of Samsung and LG yeah. and all these like companies with their curved whatevers, uh, you do start to you know yeah. it's like you see the little guys are sort of out there and the noise has died down. You can actually go find them. Right. And uh, and and I think speaking of little guys, speaking of little we guys, we have something here uh, in the studio which I'm uh, pretty excited about. I'm I'm very excited about this. Is well, we got the, we've got the new Pebble. Uh, yeah, uh, get steel. New Pebble Steel. We've got a couple options here. You have the whole box package. I actually have. Yeah. This is this is cool. You want to check got, that out? We got the uh, retail packaging. I don't know if anybody can see this. Yeah. Probably not. Should I just throw this over to you? Uh, actually, you've you got. You can get an overhead shot. I can. I yes. do want to unbox oh, man, this, this though live on the show. So this is the package. Right once here. you open that lid, give it back to me. You got it. All right. Now hand it. Now hand it back to me. That is beautiful. Give that to me. Anyhow, so oh, this is the silver one. Now, I'm, I'm more of a fan of the black. So Pebble last year was kind of a big story mm. of the show, and uh, we were very excited. I'm going to break this. This is broken. I'm not good at unboxing things. It's been a long time. You know, it's been, you've been unboxing this how this works? as a professional <laughs> for many years now. Um, but uh, and then there's some other stuff in here, which I'm not going to. I'm not going to. It's a charging cable. I don't, <laughs> need, I don't need to see that. But... Uh, I have to say, this is, and I said it, I've said it a couple times now, you know, last year Pebble was a big story mm -hmm. uh, for us because it's this, it's this Kickstarter thing that became a real product, and it's a real product that actually works. Uh, I've never been a fan of the design, the plastic design. Right. This one is definitely, the one you've got here, what do you have, the black version? I've got black on black. Yeah, I, I think that the, all, the all metal with the, the metal face and metal strap right. is actually a pretty handsome look. I mean, I could see myself... I could see myself wearing this as an as an actual watch, which is a big change for me mm -hmm. because I would not. There's not another. Uh, I can't think of another smartwatch that I've looked at and said, "Yeah, I could wear that." Right, and we've we've seen a number of smartwatches uh, this week, especially yeah. um, Meta Watch, which brought in Frank Nuovo, the uh, Vertu designer. To Meta Watch, which better. I've eviscerated on several broadcasts. I have seen that a few. I mean, times. I mean, the weird thing about Meta Watch is that is that. Here's a company that brings in this Virtu designer, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be like, oh my God, they're going to create something amazing, and they create this, which I think is, it looks like it's from 1996. You know, it well, just see, is, I, looks completely dated. And I will say the staff is somewhat divided because I think it is a very classic-looking design, not this kind of classic, not refined, not luxurious, but it is something that stands up more than say a Fitbit Flex or a Fuel Band, and many of those, which is what we're seeing have, by and large. Health, what what are the, the health show? tracking features of the Meta Watch? Must do like fit. Well, actually, I don't know. Right. But I'm assuming I don't think there are. Any. I don't think there are thing. any. I don't know. But Miriam, the, are there any health tracking features of the Fitbit Flex? Or uh, not the Fitbit Flex? The Meta Watch. Meta Watch. Do you know? You don't know. Oh, right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Miriam Joar, uh, an old friend of ours, who's uh, also <laughs> who's, works who's at Pebble. Who's now Pebble PR, gone to the dark side. Switch sides. Um, but you know, I gotta say, I'm looking at this. And I'm liking it. Really. Surprisingly. You know, half the staff has already bought one. No, I know. One. People went people went a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. So you actually got it. You, you, you know how some of the new functions work on right. this thing. Why don't we run through some of the features of the Pebble. Um, I clips. Sorry. I clearly have not had enough sleep. I You've mean, had I, more I, sleep I, this year than I would say. I, no, maybe, but I feel <laughs> completely insane right now. Yeah. And if we're speaking off the cuff, like most of our staff is like critically sick right now. And yes. I'm like, 
I'm recovering. It's and I've actually been sick for the last three days. So. But that has nothing to do with this. No, not with one the, bit. With the delightful pebbles. So let's, let's go ahead. So we've got obviously <laughs> we've got the uh, the old pebble here and the new pebbles. Uh, what pebbles nice enough to let us do is run through a few of the uh, software demos. Yeah. Let's get these out of the way. Yeah. Kind of show this off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this box away. Um, so the big thing here, obviously, we have all the same watch faces that we had before. Um, you go with this. You get notifications menu is much closer. Not only that, you can actually look through the old notifications you had. So right. once they're the, it, you've had them, they don't immediately go away go all the way down here, and we start getting to some of the uh, apps that are available. There's drive style, which is for Mercedes-Benz. We don't have a car here we can use that with, but no, that's a one. Yeah, that's a shame. Uh, Pebble Cam. It's a shame we don't have a Mercedes. I know. Here. Uh, Pebble Cam's kind of an interesting one. Let me go ahead and real quick. Oh, yeah, Pebble Cam. This is, this is a new thing. Is this a, this a third-party app? This is a third-party app. Okay. Um, small little company, actually. Uh, and what you do is it connects to your phone camera. I'll make sure it's working right now. Uh, seems to be good to go. And then it becomes your viewfinder for your camera, which is actually really nice. Like a very slow updating viewfinder. Wait. You need to run the app and you get Yeah, sorry, let's get this in, let's connect We've it. only done this one time. Yeah, before, I'll have to apologize so. for that. It's gonna take us a couple of seconds to get this working. That looks like it's working. It looks like it's working? Yeah. So if we face it to you right now. Here's the middle button on the watch takes picture. Great, and so we can actually use the watch right here. Sorry, I'm double handing this real quick. There, and we've got a beautiful picture. Okay, but I have to ask, is this, yes. is this really more convenient than just taking a picture with a, with a smartphone? No, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it is. I will say it's, that it's, it's cool. It's, it's a very impressive tech demo. No, it's cool, but it, it doesn't actually feel like it's, it's uh, uh, an improvement on pulling your phone out of your pocket and just snapping a picture. No, but let's but, say you're putting this like, this is the kind of that Sony NX lens uh, argument we had before, where it's right. like, we look at this where we can put the lens somewhere here. Yeah. I think that I think that I think what's interesting about that is it shows the potential for um, mm -hmm. when you've got an open you, an open system that you can develop for, right? And it's a watch, you know. You start to think about what are the different things you might do with it, and that's you know, it's a weird mm -hmm. idea. It might not be the perfect idea, right. but it's cool to see people trying to do new things. And this is the surprising thing about Pebbles. Like they're very very early on. Like they have an open API. They're very so far very accepting and warm of like people who develop for. And this this app store is obviously a testament to that. Yeah. Um, and for a small company to kind of come out and like kind of define what the smartwatch industry is going to be in these halcyon days, like before Samsung really got a hold of it, before Apple yeah. obviously has done anything with it. Yeah. Um, it's really impressive to say the least. What I wonder is how Pebble will fare. I mean, if Apple does the iWatch or right. whatever. I mean, the Galaxy Gear doesn't seem to have made much of an impact. I mean, clearly there's some people that are buying it. It doesn't seem like it's a widespread adoption or anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're very different devices in a lot of ways, but I am interested to know. Uh, how something like the uh, Pebble or the Meta Watch or these, or any of these smaller companies, mm -hmm. how that's going to fare when you get into you know somebody like Apple, who really knows how to do hardware and really knows how to do interfaces. Right. You know, Samsung is like struggling a little bit, I think, with the Galaxy Gear. They wanted to be first. I don't know if they're the best. So right. they're definitely not best. So you know, the, so I, so it'll be interesting to see how the market reacts to that mm -hmm. and how these watches change. I mean, I will say in the span of a year, going from the uh, plastic version of this to the metal version, you know, it's like a huge leap in design. It's a huge leap in um, in style. Right. I Interface-wise, it's still very similar, though. I mean, right. not a lot I of new functionality. I think they nail like the simplicity part of this, and this is a watch that you know you're going to want to have for at least a couple years. Right. Like it just looks that good. And it's right. very well. But I but I wonder. Tasteful. But I wonder with a smartwatch, you know, in a year, the idea it seems to be like in a year's time, there's going to be a new one. It's going to be a better one. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's the thing. I mean, this is true. The thing. That's very true. When you and, but these aren't you know these are expensive. They're not they're not as wildly expensive as a Rolex. You know, mm -hmm. they're not five thousand dollars. But like, but the one you have right there. What? How much is that one? I, I I'd rather not say. But it's a couple uh, million. It was my I grandfather's know, watch. Know. It's uh, oh wow. I didn't I didn't pay for it. So. Okay. That's the important thing. Very nice. That's though. the important thing to remember, uh, <laughs> is that I didn't pay for this. And uh, but but the point is, mm -hmm. nice watches are expensive. These are expensive for most people would, would not spend two hundred fifty dollars on a watch. No. I mean, the majority of watches like you go buy like a fifty dollar watch or something. I have a bunch of Seikos that I love that were like eighty dollars. Right. Um, but then it's like, hey, next year there's an upgrade, and the watch is, you know, has a bigger face, it's faster, it's whatever. I don't know how much we can upgrade every single thing that we, right. that we buy, especially jewelry. You don't normally do that. You buy a watch and you keep it for 10 years or 50 mm -hmm. years, you know? I mean, historically, watches are, uh, are the kinds of things that you keep in a family, you know, that you keep for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And so, 
I think what'll be interesting to see with stuff like the Pebble is what's the what's the life span of this watch. Right. You know? And I think you know it's obviously this is so early with smartwatches that we don't know like if there, are they going to hit a plateau technologically where people are really happy with what they have. Right. Like it's going to be obviously very early on. This is double the RAM. They are bringing the App Store to the old Pebble, so that does expand its yeah. lifespan. I think we're in the I think we're in the very early days mm -hmm. uh, of of these devices, but right. I gotta say, I think Pebble got a lot of stuff right, right and, I'm, and I'm relatively excited right. about what they're doing. And I do want to say, I, I, yeah. I'm sorry, go on. No, no, what were you gonna say? I, I was gonna say, like, we did talk about the Pebble Cam. The one thing I want to show off before that is some of the other apps that they're talking about, which are more practical, real quick. Okay. We have the ones like on uh, Foursquare. You can check in without yeah. having to, like, go now, Do you still use Foursquare? Are you a Foursquare user? I started again. Really? Because I was using I, it for recommendations. That I, was yeah, a big thing. I, I don't know. I just can't get in the habit of checking in places. I feel like, I don't know. I just can't mm -hmm. think of it. When I'm at places, I never think of it. And then I'm like, right. oh, I should have checked in there. It's, like, I'm at the airport, and then I leave, and I'm like, oh, I should have checked in there. It just doesn't happen. Right. It's, to me, it's the airport, it's the gym, and then it's, like, looking for places to eat. And I don't want to auto-check in. Like, I don't want to have anything where I'm auto-checking right. in, because that would just be a nightmare beyond description. Exactly. Or well within the realm of just being described. <laughs> Either way. Uh, right. All right. So, so, so Foursquare, what else? Foursquare, uh, and then Yelp, of course, recommendations. Yeah. Um, now, that, that I think can be very useful. Right. And the thing here, if you shake it a little bit, it'll actually give you a nearby recommendation. So Sushi Samba is apparently a good place around here. Did you say Sushi Samba? Yes. There's a Sushi Samba in Las Vegas? It's 0.9 miles away, and here's the phone number. That makes sense. Yeah. Let's, give them, let's all give them a call right now. Right. And we can get the <laughs> reviews from there. <laughs> a, there are currently that, several hundred people calling Sushi Samba. All in the local Vegas this, area, in this fact. This second, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, what else? Anything else? Uh, those are the big ones right now. ESPN. Um, that one only shows like the day's scores right now, so everything looks kind of yeah. like zero zero. That's great. That's those are that's sports scores. It's sports scores. Sports ball. Okay. Um, but you can choose your favorite sports. What ball other teams. kind of scores might you show? Video game scores, I guess. If you have a, I mean, that could be something if you are big into esports. Paul Miller, you know, he would love that. He, we can see Paul Miller's scores. You can check on his Dota, his StarCraft in uh -huh. real time. Yeah. All right, what's that? what else? What's that? Uh, those are the big ones right now. Um, what is that? Was that a watch face? That's a watch face. This is, a, again, Miriam, our old friend. It's a Domo watch face. Uh, it comes with some of the standard watch faces, but also we have a couple of new ones that you can always download. This is probably the nicest one we've got right here, the classic look. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. So can I see the one before that? Oh, yeah. No, no, the other way. Go here. Yep. Don't oh, me. that is awesome. That is. Amazing. I mean, I wouldn't use that face, but it's <laughs> it's cool that the face exists. Right. Basically. Um, all right. So I think you know that's a little look at the Pebble. We actually okay. have a, a, a more in-depth feature on this. Mm -hmm. We have an interview with the CEO and um, and all sorts of right uh, uh, hands-on photos and stuff. You can check that out on the site. Right. Um, but this, very 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 cool to see it in person and right. get a chance to play with it. And this is going on sale in a month, but if you order it yeah, now, this, it's, so this this is on sale now it's on, on sale Pebble's now. website and it's shipping January 28th. If you bought it, no, they're, early. So, they're like basically sold out now. Right. And so they're shipping I think in February is what it's mm -hmm. telling people. Right. But uh, late January if you have the old Pebble, the App Store should be launching must, around. Must feel then. amazing by the way if you're Pebble. Yes. And you're like, yeah, we wanted to make a smartwatch. We started the Kickstarter project. Mm -hmm. And then a year later, you introduce a new model and you're selling out like the day it goes on sale. Right. You know, that's, that's pretty incredible. It's a pretty incredible story. And I think pretty incredible example of how much technology right. has changed. I mean, I remember a few years ago talking about hardware startups and everybody was like, it's so hard to do a hardware startup. It's almost impossible. And you saw right. a lot of people fail. And now you're starting to see people succeed. No, let's see. And this is, is crazy. this only in the span of twelve months. Like Pebble was a story from last CES. Yeah. Around, actually, I think the Wednesday of last CES when we really got a time like to look at it after this whole Kickstarter thing happened with yeah. them. And in the span of twelve months, they've really kind of like changed like how we talk about these small companies. Right. No, it's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So up next, uh, there is an event happening. It's one of the last events. There's an event happening today. Uh, Jean Legere. Yes, or, T Mobile CEO. I mean, I think that's how his name is pronounced. I don't know for a fact. I say Legere. We have some people say Ledger here. Yeah. Well, I'm saying Legere. You're saying Legere. Uh, from uh, T Mobile. Yes. Who is a, you know, a wild maniac. Rather audacious. Completely human. insane. He actually, the, one of the big stories from CS this year is that he went to an ATT uh, Macklemore party. Right. Which, by the way, Macklemore said it right. Or so I'm told. I don't know if it's I, actually the right it's pronunciation. It's not Macklemore? It's apparently not Macklemore. It's apparently okay. Macklemore. Really? Unless I'm being trolled by somebody really <laughs> hard. I think that somebody would be Laura, okay. which is possible now that I think about it. So mm -hmm. at any rate, uh, 
either Macklemore or Macklemore was doing a show here right. at uh, CES, and it was an AT&T show. It was an AT&T show. AT show. John Legere went to it and was promptly ejected yes. by at Kindly escorted by out. security. Which was great and, fodder for his tour, Sorry, hold on. There's something weird going on with my hair. I just have to fix this. Of course. Okay. It's really driving <laughs> me crazy. It wouldn't, be, uh, it wouldn't be a broadcast with me if I didn't. There, I'm a much happier We can bring now. a mic here if you want Anyhow. to test it, too. Anyhow, so Legere shows up. Right. He's like, I just want to jam to Macklemore or Macklemore, whoever he is. And uh, then uh, Ralph De La Vega <laughs> kicked him out. Personally Personally, him personally out. Uh, threw him to the ground. These CEOs are rough. Bunch. <laughs> threw, threw him out and to the ground. Right. So Anyhow. actually, so John Legere, like, that's another story that happened just this year. I think March was the first big speech that we saw. I think Dan C. for myself, our director John went. Yeah. Not knowing John, John Legere is like a new guy on the scene. Yes. He's not, he's not been around for a long time. But he is something that we just can't help but talk about now. He's made a real impact. For better or for worse. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people think this, this shtick is old. I actually still like it. I still you, think. You, you, you enjoy it. I mean, how often do you see a CEO like this? And you're hearing, you're hearing people like Intel try to be like that, right. try to be a little more open. I think it's better than like a uh, lot he is, of the he is things a, we've He seen. is kind of refreshing. Yes. You know, because he's not pulling punches. Or right. at least he seems like he's not pulling punches. So we actually have uh, a video compilation mm -hmm. of Legere's greatest hits. Yes. So take a look at this. Holy shit, I don't have wireless industry experience. There's not a goddamn person in the world besides a wireless industry person that would understand why the hell this mess works this way. <laughs> this is the biggest crock of shit I've ever heard in my life. Everybody's blogging, holy crap, I can't believe he just said that. Oh, he said shit, that's how I lost the family pool. I bet he'd only swear five times. Look up, I feel like I'm the teacher. Hey, look at me. I don't want to hear a single one of you tell me after I announce this next thing. So what are you gonna do if they respond? You can't do the next of this because you hosed chapter one on algebra. Get ready for another profanity-laden tirade on AT&T. I can't resist. It's not the G-rated version. It's like, hey kids, is it better for your network to be crap? Or is it better to have a good LTE high-speed network in New York? And then this is the one that comes up with the great answer. I'm gonna explain how stupid we all are but not make us feel bad. Holy crap, what happened to my phone? Cut the crap on the prepaid, postpaid. We can do it just like, a guy like you. Hey, Billy, what's, what's better, bigger or smaller? I mean, come on. I hope I'm not coming across as angry here. <laughs> if the way you want to respond to this tactic is to say, no, there's a contract on the device, it's not really good, go for it. It's bullshit, it's hype. I'm AT&T, and my customers hate me. What's keeping them up at night is us. Right. Big Macklemore yeah. fan. I oh, saw yeah. It. Yeah. 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 Right. I've already told you about the spaceship and the aliens coming in. Please stop the bullshit. You know how I spend my time tweeting, Skyping, blogging, posting, Googling, FaceTiming. Go. Well, frankly, you're just pissed because the little girl sitting next to you has a better phone than you. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. Okay, if you're typing, I didn't say, we're going completely into the prepaid business. Watch out, Boost. So we're gonna make you pay your bill later in a very complicated way with a contract so we can take the shit out of your pockets for two years. It's so beautiful for me, because this is just a broken <laughs> industry with a bunch of arrogant people that don't know how to tell it like it is. I call them, oh shit moments. Oh shit is really an abbreviation. Not necessarily because your phone fell in the toilet. It's short for, oh shit, I'm tied into an effing contract and I can't get out for two years and I'm gonna hold that toilet-ridden phone to my head for the next two years. <laughs> Frankly, they don't have the balls to say it either to the manufacturers or to the customers. You are now, you are the first broadcaster on television to say balls right there, so we're a pair. By the way, my, my daughter's here today. You young bloggers, uh, after the uh, speech today, if you find yourself hitting on an attractive young girl whose tag says Ledger, you're dead. I mean, we can track you down with these cell phones. Don't let them kid you. I mean, like, I, I have to say, maybe it's an act, but it makes me want to be his customer. I feel like... Like, like he just sounds... First off, he doesn't sound insane. I mean, a no, lot of the stuff no. he's saying is right. 
Right. And they have actually changed T-Mobile plans to be somewhat less restrictive and crappy. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not as it's not like what you would expect after you see hearing that. Right. It's not like this huge sea change. Maybe today will be the huge sea change. We don't know. But he is really likable and likeable. really funny. And, and he's, he's like the FX network of CEOs. He doesn't mind swearing a lot. He's yeah. saying the same thing in yeah. wide ways, but he's just bringing it a much more blunt. Yeah, and, and, and frankly, it, it's just refreshing to see somebody who isn't right. so rehearsed trying to work through their script. Right. You know, this guy's just kind of he's just riffing. Right. And, and it works. And like, what the weird thing is, if you see um, people's reaction to it, you know, in a kind of the broad market sense, people are like, I like, I know of the CEO's mm -hmm. existence and I like him, which is something you basically don't hear anywhere. Right. You know, I mean, nobody's talking about how much they like Mark Zuckerberg. No, you know? no. And like, I mean, Elon Musk, people, you know, love him. But he's he's another, again, it's another audacious another, like man. flamboyant, very flamboyant, audacious character. Right. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty incredible. So, so John Legere is, is, as you can see, loves social media, loves right. Instagram. So, <laughs> the, there's the two things. Like the press conference John Legere, everyone loves. People love seeing those speeches. That's yeah. never been a thing. Twitter, in this day and age, of course, is a huge deal. Very active on Twitter. And he and cannot stop. We tweeting. have some John Legere, right? Uh, some John Legere tweets here. Right, so, so this is this here's is the one, one from right before he got kicked out of so the AT&T the, party. And I said this, I, I said this last night on the Vergecast, but I think we should be concerned about the fact that he's doing the bunny ears. <laughs> yeah. that, that to me is is problematic here. I think right. in this day and age. So um, yeah, and this is what his reaction to it. Uh, yeah. What happens in Vegas will be on the internet in seconds. This is the AT&T ad. John Legere, especially when you're kicking in the competition. Kicking, kicking the out com the competition from your party, right, AT&T? He, I mean, there are a few things you learn from John Legere reading his tweets. The first thing is he really, really does hate AT&T really specifically. AT&T he hates more than anything. Yes. I, all right, what else do we have here? All right. This is him just going to oh, New yeah, Jersey. Oh, yeah, he's, he's in a mall. <laughs> he just went to a mall in New Jersey. He took a picture of an empty AT&T store and tweeted it. Just That's the great. the biggest troll. What else? Uh, <laughs> for the Breaking Bad finale. Yeah, he's suggesting AT and T for burner phones. Yes. Um, and this. I don't is know what the, what is this. He's just, he's just. He's just him in like a cool jacket. He loves looking at himself. He does a couple selfies. Here's okay. one. Uh, here's him talking about his turkey changing to phone deals. Again, trying to brine a turkey for the first time, changing wireless industry was easier than being the chef. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess. It's I a little bit. I mean. Confusing. This and this is a sign of his hashtag obsession. He does a lot of very, very hashtag, bizarre Hashtag objects. cover girl Katie. Yes. Is that even a real hashtag or did John Legere invent that? I'm not sure. If you look at the <laughs> like, next one. I think he's like, let's start this trend. I think so. All right, what else do we have here? We've got, mm. uh, oh, yes, he also is a big fan of the Batman. Oh, yeah, Batman. He's like obsessed with Batman. Yeah, he fashions himself as like the Batman of the uh, care of the mobile carriers. Right. But it gets, it gets really weird. So here's another hashtag example. Hashtag spinning, hashtag power hour. What does spinning mean? Uh, that's the that's like the soul oh, cycle oh he's stuff. spinning oh, yeah he's, he's like soul like soul spinning cycle. class I've learned okay. so much about John Legere in like the last twenty what else hours. what else do we have here um, this is where the Batman obsession gets a little bit weird yeah this is the Batman I feel like at some point DC is going to take action I, you must have because here this is his office he's got Batman logos it's also like in bright pink which is like <laughs> it, you know bat magenta Batman Batman you know at times Batman's uh, costume gets weird but it's a little weird typically not like. Hot pink or magenta. No, that's like when you're when you're when you're uh, uh, searching out criminals in the night mm -hmm. and attacking them and beating yeah. them into a lifeless pulp. Right. It feels like magenta might be the wrong color. It's like, I'm not. I'm not saying it's effeminate. I'm saying it's just really bright. Not to mention, like <laughs> you know, it's just a, it's an extremely bright color. Like if you're sneaking around, mm -hmm. magenta is probably not going to be the tone you're going for. Not to mention his hatred of AT and T. He's not going to actually beat up Ralph De La Vega. No, he might. He might. <laughs> I mean, let's put it this way. If there was a story today, if there was a story today, Jean Legere punches Ralph De La Vega in the face. Right. It's not like we'd be like, what? I can't believe that happened. Nope. It'd be like, yeah, that was the logical conclusion of what was going on. Like, the early morning, we find Ralph De La Vega, like, hanging from a light pole yeah. string. Yeah, like, right. with, a, with a sign for the police. The <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what's going to happen. Are there any more tweets? We've got, unfortunately, a few more. Have. This is his own t-shirt now. He yeah, got the of Batman is, Now, this is heaven, is his tweet. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, is it hashtag magnets? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, wait, yeah, that's good stuff. What's the next one? Uh, and then here we go. The full transformation is the last one. Uh, him dressed up as Batman with at T-Mobile With a T-Mobile shirt on. Yes. I get it. He's like um, avenging the death of fairness <laughs> in wireless contracts. 
I guess. Right? That like, makes sense. His 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 family had. Anyhow, an issue so with the so clearly the man is a very colorful character and uh, always entertaining. Very entertaining. I mean, regardless of whether you agree with him or not, always entertaining. What's going on behind me? Do I? This <laughs> is just hanging out. It's just yeah. Cool. Did you think he made this background himself? I I bet he actually used T-Mobile like, money I, to I do feel this. like he's like I'm going to spend I'm going to spend several hours photoshopping. Uh, <laughs> oh, you think he did it personally? Yeah, yeah, no, personally. <laughs> um, so we have the T-Mobile event. What time does it happen? It's at 12:30 today. We'll be 12 12:30 today. We'll be streaming it live. Uh, we're going to be live streaming the T-Mobile event. I'm just trying to figure out what camera I'm on. We're live streaming the T-Mobile <laughs> event. Uh, John Legier is sure to do something completely outrageous and we will right. capture it. Uh, so we'll be live blogging it, live streaming it, mm -hmm. and uh, and then that's the only event for today. Right. right? Now it's just we're gonna go hit the show. Now floor. we're just gonna go. You're gonna be seeing all kinds of crazy news and reports. Mm -hmm. uh, our guys are out doing yep. weird stuff at the moment. You're they've, gonna be seeing lots been more beaten. They've been tased, electrocuted. <laughs> all by John Legere. All by John Legere. While, while, while he was being a vigilante. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but so there's gonna be a lot more news today. Right. A lot more CES news. We have a lot of stuff to do. And uh, for the rest of the week, actually, there's there's mm -hmm. much more coming from The Verge, so stay right. tuned. And then later on tonight, we'll, we'll of course, have the uh, Vergecast After Hours. Last night uh, was one for the for, for the books. Probably, honestly, I'd say one of the best ones to watch. I don't know if that's true, but uh, but I'll accept if it. You like, if you like Yahoo, if you like trolling Yahoo and you love uh, where Sony's going, I think it was a great one to watch. Yeah. And alcohol, if you love alcohol. If you love alcohol. And uh, and I think that's it for first. That is it for today. I don't, I don't think we have anything else to talk about. It's, we got to hit the show floor and find it. At the moment, we really do. Uh, so so that's it for us. We'll be back tomorrow yes. with more first. And uh, until then, have a wonderful, wonderful day.